Today is Monday the 29th of July. I'm just going to do a short little video to see um, a few jobs that have to be done here and what I have been doing over the last 10 days or so. Um, here's my little mole plough that I made a few years ago. It has done a lot of work for me. It's a 15 inch um, sort of maximum depth, two to one torpedo in terms of ratio and it has done an incredible amount of good work and I've seen the improvement that it has brought to some of the land. Um, it's just the right capacity for the 80 horsepower tractor, anything um, more than that and we'd be struggling around this land here but just going to bring it back to the land here. Um, here we have one of the worst fields remaining. As, as you know, I'm moving sort of field by field and trying to address the various issues to get them back into full productivity. This is one of the worst that I have left and I have two left like this. One of them uh, is the one that has shores to be finished and has to be obviously mowed after and cleaned off. This here is very dry down there, but extremely wet here. I do not know why. There's a shore right through it. There was moulds put in it about three years ago. We have an oak tree and we have some good ash trees. They're absorbing moisture. And yet, it's very, very wet over this area here. All it needs is a minimal amount of rain. But I want to contrast this with what I have done, uh, work I've completed over the last 10 days, to show you know there is hope, um, even in marginal land, to get it back into full productivity. And this is the field here, which you see now, minus uh, the rush, it was absolutely covered in rushes, just the very same as what we have just passed. Um, this field was short about five years ago and really nothing nothing at all was done with it. There was a serious crop of rushes on it. It was um, mulched a few years ago and I think it was the worst thing I ever done because even though it cleaned it off well that year, the following year, the crop of rushes were the best I ever seen. And this land is in quite a rough state, as you can see, because it was poached over the years. Um, the rushes prevented it from drying, from you know the sunlight and the wind getting into the soil. And so what I done here is I mowed these about 10 days ago, let them dry out, rolled them all up, and as you can see, I disposed of them. I burnt them all, um, because it's impossible to do anything with a heavy crop of rush. If you leave it on the land, it destroys the grass coming through it. It's not conducive to rehabilitation at all. So um, last Saturday, weather being so good, forecast being reasonably dry, um, I started mole ploughing. Now what I have done here is the mole ploughs are going exactly perpendicular here to the drainage channels. So ideally you should always mole across um, the slope, but it doesn't make sense here because I have three shores, chip shores that are running across the slope from the top to the bottom. So what this will do is it'll act as a conduit to bring all of that water into the shore for quick disposal. Um, now there's a change as you can see in the topology when we move over here. There is a fall off um, in a different direction over at this side. So what we have done here is we have brought the moles right down until I came to approximately close enough to where the last actual drain is um, which is around somewhere here now it mightn't be scientific but it's close enough to here so um, that was where we finished right there now these moles here some of the water will get into the shore that's left over there I can see the mark on the land there over the back behind me but these ones here the slope is going the other direction and there are two um, shores, here's one of them here, stones pulled up, and there's another one down further. So again, we have the same principle involved. The water is going to go down these channels, just right down there, and it's going to find its way either into that previous shore we've seen, or the other one that's down here. Now, it's an ideal opportunity for moorland land because it's so dry. But as you can see, the land here has suffered dramatically over the few years. This was once one of the loveliest fields. In 19, I think it was 94, it was the only time um, I ever made hay in one day and it was in this field. And it was the loveliest crop of hay. Uh, it was light enough but it actually turned out to be fabulous hay. The quality of the grass was a very fine type of fescue, lots of clover 
um, no heavy grasses at all in it. I believe that way back it was, as they used to say long ago, seeded the departmental way with departmental approved grasses. But you can see for yourself here, land here is very poor, very badly damaged and it's going to need a bit of reseeding and rehabilitation um, to get it back into the productivity. It's especially, there's one of the other shores there, you can see the stones there, it's especially wet over here. It was always wet over there. You can even see, despite the dry weather, how I left a track mark. So what I'm going to do here in this particular area, just across here, is I'm going to concentrate my farmyard manure, the farmyard manure that has been treated with bacterosol. I'm going to put a little bit out on this probably quarter of the field. I'm not going to touch the rest for now. It'll, it'll be a job for next year. And to try to see over the winter, can I incorporate the bacterosol um, manure and hopefully get it into the soil and what I will do when this dries out a bit too is I'm going to put a bag of grow lime on this just on this area here so everything to help the soil to open up to flocculate to get that water off the surface as quickly as possible but this has a lovely clover sward you'll see it there it's loaded with clover the whole field despite the rushes is loaded with clover so the plan here is the grass is going to grow, I'm not going to touch anything. When the grass grows to a reasonable height, I let the cattle in, let them eat whatever grass and clover is here. And then I'm going to lick all of the brush that has come back. I think it's the only permanent way of getting rid of them. So we lick all of them and then next year or next spring, put out some farmyard manure again, some fertilizer. And I intend to possibly take a crop of hay or silage off this next year to bring it back to its, its, its former glory. But it is a bit of a mess as you can see at the moment very thick rush infestation so that's the plan so we'll see how we go um it's going to take two years really to get this back but once it's back it'll be a lovely field again and also considering the fact that the cattle went from 10 years ago spending maybe five days on this to less than two days now it'll show you the impact of having heavy rush infestation on land not conducive at all to, to, to growing grass and to feeding livestock. So that's the plan, so let's see how we go.